So this is the new GoPro Hero 10 Bones Edition, which is built for FPV drones. It's basically a Hero 10 stripped down to the bare necessities to make it as light as possible. This camera weighs 54 grams, which is about a third of the weight of a normal GoPro. And even though it's much lighter, it still features most of the same specs you'd see in a Hero 10. It has the same crispy 5.3K resolutions and frame rates you know and love, as well as photo and time-lapse modes. And you're able to remove this lens cover and swap it out with a compatible GoPro ND filter. But when you shave off all that weight and make it as small as possible, you're bound to lose some features. There's no battery, you have to wire it directly into your drone, which we'll talk about more in a second. There's no USB connector, which means you aren't able to upload directly to your computer. But to offset that, there is a micro SD card slot here on the side, but that also means that this camera is not waterproof at all which is a bit of a bummer, but definitely something to keep in mind when flying. There is also no GPS built into this. So you're not able to track your speed or route. And lastly, we only get one mic instead of three, which isn't a huge drawback, as most of the time we don't need amazing audio, but it is nice to have the option of syncing up audio tracks later in post if we are running multiple cameras. But with all these reductions, you should notice increased flight time due to the lightweight of the GoPro. Included in the box with this camera is a mounting bracket and a wire plug-in that attaches from your camera to the flight controller on your drone. This means that the GoPro will run directly off your drone's flight controller, which provides a safe source of power while also giving you control to start and stop recording on the GoPro from your transmitter. So to connect your GoPro to the drone requires a little bit of soldering and programming, which is why I brought my good friend and FPV pilot Reese to walk us through all of that. All right, so when it comes to powering up your GoPro from your drone, GoPro supplies you with this diagram with all the instructions to follow for wiring up to your flight controller. So we're gonna start by disassembling the drone so you have easy access to the flight controller. Next, locate a five volt and ground pad on the flight controller. Solder the red wire to the five volt pad and the black wire to the ground pad. Make sure you do not get these wires crossed as it will cause your camera to be fried. Next, locate an empty TX pad. This is for the yellow wire. This is what's going to allow you control over the camera's record and stop. When you plug a battery into your drone, your GoPro should power up and you should be able to start setting up your GoPro with all the settings that you'd like. Lastly, you'll need to set up the shutter control in beta flight. I'll touch on this in just a second. So next, for the second option, which I probably prefer the most. So first, we're gonna need a female LiPo balance connector that matches whatever cell battery you're using. In our case, we're using a four cell. And this is going to allow us to wire directly to the three pin connector that GoPro supplies us with. We will first remove the middle wires from the connector, leaving just a power and a ground wire. Next, take the three pin connector that GoPro supplies, figure out how much length you're gonna need and make sure that it's not gonna get caught in the props or in view of the camera. And then cut and expose the wire in preparation for the solder. Then before we go any further, make sure you get some heat shrink and put it on the wire before we solder. You don't wanna have to do this over again. So now that we have our heat shrink, we're gonna take the red wire from the GoPro three pin connector. We're gonna match it up with the power wire from the balance connector and solder those. And then do the same thing for the black wire. I match it up with the ground and solder. For the yellow wire, in this case, we're not gonna be using it. So what you can do is either cut it shorter and then fold it back and then either electrical tape around the end of it or hot glue works as well, just so that it has no option to touch anything and short out. After this, go ahead and heat up the heat shrink and shrink it down to protect everything. And then you should be good to go ahead and plug in to your camera and plug into your battery and your GoPro should power up and you can begin setting it up. So the nice thing that GoPro has done with these cameras is they allow you to run from 1S LiPos all the way up to 6S LiPos directly from the battery. You don't need to have any anything placed in between the power supply to protect the camera from a high voltage. It's already built in, protected, ready to go. So going back to option number one, to be able to use your transmitter to control the GoPro, you're going to need to use Betaflight to program the flight controller to know what to do with the yellow wire that we soldered. All these steps are outlined on GoPro's website, so you can find all the instructions there. I personally have not been having the most success with this route, as the GoPro will sometimes record, it sometimes won't. That's why I suggest and prefer the option of running directly from your battery, although you do have to sit there with the drone turn it on, start the recording, and then stop it when you come back. It is so much better to have that ease of mind knowing that you're recording and that you're getting what you're flying behind or next to or through. So use at your own risk. 
When it comes to mounting, they included this adapter that allows you to attach this camera directly to any traditional GoPro mounts. On the back of the GoPro, they have a mounting post connected directly to the case and this bracket attaches with a small Allen key bolt and nut that is included in the box. This mounting bracket on the back is directly in line with the center of the lens, which is awesome because it gives us a perfectly centered image when flying. Before we go test this out, there are a few other features worth mentioning. This GoPro uses GoPro Labs as its master firmware, which gives you the ability to customize your settings into a QR code, which then you can place in front of your GoPro to scan those settings in, which isn't anything new. Older GoPros support this as well, but since this camera doesn't have a screen, this is an easy way to create some presets where you can print these QR codes or save them directly to your phone. This can save a bunch of time and you can easily verify that you have the right settings by simply scanning the QR code rather than going all the way into the app. Which yes, you are still able to connect your phone to the GoPro via the Quick Capture app where you can see a preview and adjust your settings like any other GoPro. This GoPro also supports quick capture and defaults with a short press to video and a long press to time lapse. Once you have power to your GoPro, you'll see a slow blinking red light on the back to indicate it's on and working. You have three modes, video, photo, and time lapse. And you can switch between them with this bottom button, which is the power slash mode button. You can tell what mode you're in by how many times the light flashes. One flash is video mode, two flashes is photo mode, and three flashes is time lapse mode. Then to start recording, press the top button and the light will now be a slow flash just like any other GoPro light when recording. All right, dude, hopefully your flying's good or this might turn into a durability test. A little rusty, we'll give her. Two seconds later. Oh! God dang it! Howdy. Let's good, take a actually. look at this bad boy. Still solid. Sick. She's intact. After you stack your clips and bring them back to the computer, you'll notice that they have updated the GoPro Player app, which now has Real Steady included. First of all, this is nice for the fact that it's all in the same app, and one of the big changes with this is you no longer have to disable HyperSmooth. Whereas before, HyperSmooth had to be off for Real Steady to work, but to put it to the test, I did a comparison between HyperSmooth on and off, then ran it through Real Steady, and I honestly didn't notice hardly any differences between the two. When you apply Real Steady, you have a few extra options such as smoothness, cropping, and lens correction you can mess around with. Once you are ready to export, make sure you have logged into Real Steady or you will get this error message and won't be able to export with the stabilization. You can log in by clicking on Real Steady up here and put in your email and activation code you should have received when purchasing your GoPro. Then once that's done, you can continue with the export like any other GoPro and make sure the Real Steady box is checked in the export screen. So that's the whole rundown on this new GoPro Bones camera and if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.